Hello and welcome to Brandon's Boats. I'm Brandon, where I've been practicing boating in California for over 20 years. And today we're going to talk about a topic that may not get mentioned very often. Usually it'll come up in local community forum posts or discussions and stuff. But it's something everybody notices when you're driving around. You, you look, oh, somebody ditched the boat here in the desert. Oh, there's a boatman field over there. So you notice it, you see it, but you may not, may not be discussed too often. So what I want to do today is explain why I think it's happening. Now, we're going to be going over some, uh, some laws here. Um, now, I'm not licensed to practice law in California, or any state for that matter, because I'm not an attorney. But what I can speak from is personal experience. I've been doing this a long time, and I know how you get rid of a boat, and I know the hassle behind it, and I understand why people don't do it. So before we begin, if you've watched my content before, you may have seen or heard me mentioning throwing your boat away at the dump. In California, you cannot do that. You need to get a junk slip from the DMV before the dump will allow you to take that boat in there. I'm going to go over a hypothetical. The details of the story don't necessarily matter because the end result is the same. Getting rid of the boat, you still need to get that junk slip. Now this is going to vary wildly from state to state. We're talking about California. If you're in Arizona, there's a whole different ballgame. And also, we're going to be benching trailers a lot. In California, waterfront property, few and far between. I'd say 99% of the people that own a boat also own a trailer to go with that boat. So this hypothetical, let's say you were given a boat. Let's, let's say it's a late 60s, early 70s tri-haul with a uh, old OMC stern drive. Whoever gave it to you or sold it to you didn't have paperwork. You say, eh, not a problem. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Fast forward, you know. 30 years, you don't have any paperwork, the boat's long fallen apart, it's junk, the motor's worn out or doesn't run, and the outdrive sucks. Everything about this thing is just trash. So you want to get rid of it, you want it out of your drive while you're tired of looking at it. So you try to sell it. Well, other people agree that the thing is junk, not buying it. Okay. You could sell it, you could list it for free and get rid of it, granted, but you, you may have some money invested in this thing or want to get something out of it. Or let's say the trailer's still good and you want to you have a project idea for something to do with the trailer. So you want to keep the trailer. How do you get rid of the boat? Well, it's got an engine and outdrive. You, you could pull it, try to sell it, scrap it. That's, that's probably the best bet in that case. And basically you're left now with a hull and trailer. What do you do with the hull? Well, the obvious answer is you take it to the dump and let them deal, deal with it. And that's where the problems come from. Let's read my notes here. To throw away a boat in California, you need what's called a junk slip. You take that junk slip to the dump, show it to the dump, and then you can go throw away your boat. So you need to get that junk slip. That's, that's really all you need. So let's, let's read how you get that. This is California Vehicle Code Section 11520. Individuals can junk and or dismantle a vehicle. The requirements to junk a vehicle are essentially the same requirements needed to register and or transfer a vehicle. And uh, that's a problem. So, prior to dismantling a vehicle, or junking, or throwing away, the vehicle owner must submit an application to DMV to record the vehicle as junk. When an owner dismantles a vehicle prior to doing this, the owner is subject to an investigative service fee. So they're saying if you dismantled the vehicle and got rid of it, not took it to the dump, but we're taking it to the dump. There's nothing to take apart on the old boat haul, you know? So you need paperwork to get that junk slip. It's that's pretty pretty straightforward. So let's uh, let's keep reading. The following must be submitted: evidence of ownership. Yeah. The applicant may be may not be the registered owner listed on the California certificate of title because the vehicle has not been transferred registered in the applicant's name. In such cases, the applicant must present the documents needed to record the applicant as the registered owner. This may be one of the following, and then I have a list of ways of recording it. So you need to get that boat in your name. There's a few problems with that. Let's say you don't have the title. Well, you need the title. Let's say you don't have a bill of sale. Well, you need a bill of sale. You forgot who you bought it from. Well, you're going to need that. You lost the paperwork. Well, that's an even bigger problem. You go to the DMV with nothing. They send you, they send you a empty handed. Still no junk slip to go throw away your boat. It's a problem. A lot of these boats that you see out there, a lot of them, old ones anyway, don't have paperwork. They've transferred ownership, you know, 10 times over the years and everything's gotten lost along the way. You now have a problem because there's no way you can register that thing in your name in order to get it 
you know, a jump slip for it. So it's a problem. Let's say you do have a title, right? You need the chain of title. So, you know, this person owned it. He sold it to this person, who sold it to this person, who sold it to this person, who sold it to this person. So you need the title and the bill of sales every step of the way, the, the chain of title. And on an old boat, good luck having that. Ideally, you just have the title, fill it out, and you're good. So that, that I think, is the issue, really the issue, is the title. A lot of these things, like I said, don't have titles, and you need them to register that boat. Because without registering it in your name, you are not getting a jump, jump slip on that vehicle. So let's say, let's say you do have all that paperwork, which is good for you. Um, we need other things. In my hypothetical here, I mentioned, you know, it hasn't registered in a while. At least I think I did. I might have. I don't know. The thing now you need to do is bring it current. As in paying all the back fees and service fees that are due on it. Paying the junk slip fee, which last time I did, it was like $15. And any, if it did change hands a few times, a uh, transfer fee, I think it's $15 per owner every step of the way. So, if, you know. If it's been 10 different hands before you got it, you're looking at $150 plus the $15 dump fee right off the bat. Then you also have the uh, vehicle transfer fee. I don't know if they would ch charge you the uh, title fee, but they may. And since it is a uh, vehicle, you're probably going to have to pay the new California gas tax on top of it. There's a lot of problems there. But, yeah, okay, you're, you're not into it that much. And now we come to the penalty of fees section. The Department of Motor Vehicles does not offer a grace period for paying your annual re vehicle renewal fees. Be sure to pay any renewal fees on or before the expiration date or the DMV will charge penalties. The longer you delay your payment, the greater the penalty amount will be. Penalty fees are assessed in addition to any other fees due. Penalties are determined by adding a percentage of the vehicle license fee plus a registration late fee plus a California Highway Patrol late fee. A lot of fees here. Now, Let's say it's, if it's only two years out, you're good, but there's a chart here and it goes through different years and different fees, but let's say it's over two years and that's where you're going to have problems. More than two years, 160% of the vehicle license fee due for that year. 160% for that year. So let's say, let's say it wasn't registered since, you know, 76. So in 78, it was due, not paid. You now have 160% penalty for 19. 78, and then 1980. Uh, California is every two years, by the way. So you're going to have one in 1978. 1980, another 160%. 1982, another 160%. This adds up ridiculously fast. There's a lot of vehicles out there that are good vehicles that people own and just stop driving because they got something newer and better with air conditioning or whatever. A lot of vintage vehicles, and they just didn't keep up on the fees. So all of a sudden, you, you, have, the, you have this vehicle. It's got thousands of dollars of back fees due on it. I mean, the vehicle is essentially worthless at that point. So maybe a good vehicle with some low miles, but, you know, five grand in back fees, it, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so on top of the 160%, you also have the registration late fee, $100, and the CHP late fee of $100. So depending on the size of your boat, the weight of your boat, and other factors is going to depend on the cost to register the boat for that year. I don't know exactly what it could be. I could probably do the math, but I'm a busy man. So you may be looking anywhere between hundreds and thousands of dollars to be able to legally throw this boat away. And I think that is where the root of the problem really is and why you're seeing all these boats ditch in the desert. It's just so expensive to get rid of it. The other problem too is in California, I've seen my experience, there's a lot of flippers. People will see something for free on Craigslist, take it home and then try to sell it. If you see a free boat, you have three aspects of the boat, you know, the trailer, the hull, and the motor. They see that as free, they're gonna take it, they're gonna sell or scrap the engine, and then they're gonna to wanna to try to sell the trailer, but they gotta get rid of the boat. They're not gonna pay thousands of dollars to get rid of the boat, so it goes to the desert somewhere. Then they can sell the trailer. And mind you, that's only if you can get the chain of title. If you can't, you're, you're basically stuck with this thing. It's, it's, a pro it's a, really a problem. So what's the answer here? In my opinion, let them throw it away. Get rid of the requirement to having a jump slip to throw away a boat, you'll stop seeing it in the desert. A lot of people will understand that legally throwing it away is cheaper than the fine if you get caught dumping it. Now, last time I threw away a boat, there was a lot of fees that the dump adds on to you, but I want to say it was like $60 or $70. Not bad, but the fine for you know illegal dumping is like $2,500. I think most people will just opt to 
do it the legal way and take it to the dump. Until you have these two sheets of requirements that I have here, that's when the story changes. A lot of people aren't going to want to pay a couple thousand dollars to throw away a boat when nobody drives down to 138 late at night. You know what I mean? And honestly, I'm not against willy-nilly throwaway boats anyway. A lot of these boats are old and junk and nobody's going to want them. Nobody wants to put money into them anyway. Just let them go to die. Get crushed up in little, tiny little pieces and buried. Now, I know a lot of people out there, my audience here, are thinking, well, if it's not on file, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you can get lucky. The DMV started digitizing their records in 2003. So if the boat hasn't been registered or any inquiries done since 2003, there's a good chance they don't have any record of it. Therefore, you don't have any, uh, any chain of title that they're going to look for because they have no record of it. You can then apply for the new boat registration, make up some story about how you're, you're the original owner, get it in your name after paying you know a couple hundred dollars in fees, and then be able to go throw it away. You could get lucky with that. Chances are, eh, not so much. Now, there are other ways to get a title for the boat. Now, you know, we could go through that for hours. But this is just, just basics. And that's not even taking into account the DMV itself. I mean, if you're lucky, you're out of there in, you know, four hours. But a lot of times, you know, you'll be sitting there waiting for six hours. All of a sudden, it's closing time and they kick you out. It's an issue. People travel hundreds of miles to go to a remote DMV just because they can. They can be seen there. Don't believe me? Try to try to go to a DMV in, in LA or in Pomona. Impossible. San Diego too. Not going to happen. Now, I do understand that there are still going to be people out there that aren't going to want to pay the dump fees to throw away a boat when they could just throw it out in a field somewhere. I, 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 know, I know that. I think a lot of them you could weed out if they just got rid of the junk slip requirement. I, also, I see a lot of times, too, people asking, like, oh, why won't the city do anything about this? Well, what, what do you expect them to do? I mean, that's a privately owned boat sitting on, most of the time, privately owned land. It's now the landowner's problem. The landowner isn't going to do anything with it, so it, it sits there. Now, if it gets ditched on state land, well, that's a different story, because you may think, oh, well, they have a license with the local tow company, let the tow company come get it. The tow company's not going to touch it because they have to go get a junk slip too. So it, it sits. You know, these things are an eyesore. Nobody wants to look at them. Probably not good for the environment it's sitting out there. So there's, there's a lot of problems. So let's say you don't have the financial ability or the title requirements to throw away your boat. How do you get rid of it? Well, there's only really one way other than ditching in the desert, which I don't recommend. And that is cutting it up into tiny little pieces and throwing it away one piece at a time. That'll work, but after you do it once, you're never gonna to wanna to do it again. But let's hope you only have to go through this once in your life. Wait, wait, no, sorry, that might be illegal too. Prior to dismantling a vehicle, the vehicle owner must submit an application to the DMV to record the vehicle as junk. When an owner dismantles a vehicle prior to doing this, the owner is subject to an investigative service fee. Will things ever change in California? I, I doubt it, I really do. Um, I have here, the California money hose. Money just, you know, in the form of fees, just pour out of this hose. And if you notice, there's no valve on it to turn it off. They want the money for those back fees and back registration. That's free money for them. Yeah, so who cares if it pollutes the environment? California gets money out of it. So long as there's money to be made, they're not going to stop. I suppose I'm making this video as a warning to other states. Let people throw their boats away without a pile of fees and regulations requirements attached to it. There are a lot of boats just sitting out in California, just sitting, that are never going to get touched, you're never going to get thrown away. Nobody wants to deal with them, and they just sit there. Even if some good Samaritan comes along with a trailer with a winch on it and winches up that boat, it's now his problem and his financial responsibility to throw it away. Nobody's going to touch it. So if your state's going to change some requirements, I don't think they have, uh, I don't think they do any voting on uh, vehicle codes, but for some weird reason, if they do, and that comes up, I recommend fighting him on it. Uh, no viewer has asked about the $5 bill here, so I'll answer that question. I threw a boat away yesterday. I had $20 in my pocket. That's some of my change. Other states let you do it. You know how many boats are around here? Hardly any. There's one that I know of that's sitting on reservation land. Otherwise, the desert's pretty clear of boats around here. Why? 
because you can take them to the dump. Well, everybody, that's all I have for you today. I've got to get going. I've got to put all this stuff away before my kids see it and want to start playing with it. So I'll see you next time.